visible aspect of submission. It starts and ends with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in our actions. That the way our beloved Prophet ﷺ did anything, that is how we do things. And the things that the Prophet ﷺ stayed away from and told us to stay away from, we stay away from those. In our words, in our actions, in our interactions, in our sleeping, in our waking hours, in our talking and not talking, in our giving and withholding, we, a person should be able to see us and relate us visibly to our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way we look, the way we deal with people, the way our akhlaq is, the way our personality is, people should be very easily able to say that this is a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة. The people of hellfire and the people of Jannah, the people of paradise, they are never the same. They are never equal. They are nowhere, never, ever, even close to each other. They are very different, and this difference should be visible. And this difference is made visible by bringing sunnas in the life of a believer. Sunnah is what distinguishes us visibly from those who have believed and those between, this is a difference between those who have believed and those who have not believed. Because whatever we think in our head is in our head. Only a perfect belief, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enable us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if it feels awkward to us. Even if it feels against the norm to us, the norm of the society. This is the expression of how strong our belief is. Only a perfect belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us do the right thing as per the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if it involves loss for us. Even if we know that we are going to to hurt because of this deal that we are making, we, are, we will follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will dress like our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will stay away from those things of immodesty and vulgarity that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us to. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave very clear injunctions about modesty and haya. Now no matter how much from inside we want to do acts of vulgarity or no matter how much from inside we want to dress the way we want to dress and we want to appear the way we want to appear and no matter how much we want to conform to the society we will conform to the sunnah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and not give up on our, the ways of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is what a Muslim is. This is what a Muslim should be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that if you claim to love your Allah, if you have any claim that you love your Allah, then follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is being commanded to tell people. So it's not that Allah would say that there's, there's, there's one style of saying that I'm saying this. I'm saying this, I'm, I'm addressing the people directly. Ya yuhal nas, ya yuhal ladina amanu, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses people directly, although of course the means is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the Quran is being given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there is very many ayat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say this. Now imagine Allah is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell the people about his importance. Allah is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you tell the people how important I am. 
Imagine the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That Allah is telling him to tell people that if you listen to me, if you follow me, if you obey me, you will find Allah. Try to understand, imagine the, the, the confidence in this ayah, the strength of this ayah. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being commanded, he will say to people that follow me if you want to, if, if you claim to love Allah. And of course the words are of Allah. So my dear respected brothers, without following in the footsteps of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no hope. There is no hope. And there is no chance. Therefore, it is very important for us that we start learning the life of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How he dealt with people. What were his commands? What were his preferences? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us a very clear injunction which is that men and women will stay separate. Men and women will stay separate. Men will not look at women, women will not look at men. Men will lower their gaze, women will also lower their gaze. Women will also keep themselves covered because they are the more beautiful of the two. They, so they will be protected even more. Now if in the name of Sunnah, in the name of Islam, somebody brings them together, will it be okay? How can these people dare to face the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment? When the action of the Sahaba was such that as soon as they were told this, this, is, this is written in books that there was the Sahabia, she was outside. When the clear command of this separation and hijab came, she was outside. And the Prophet ﷺ told this command to people, somebody related this command to her and said that, Oh my sister, the command of hijab has come. She did not move even a single more step, she turned towards a rock or a wall, faced that way and did not move and asked for her cloak to be brought from home. She would not even dare to take a few more steps to reach her house. Imagine how will we face those people on the Day of Judgment? How will we be able to stand before those people when we are bringing men and women together in the name of Islam and an Islamic festival? If somebody comes to learn deen from us because of our imama and because of our head covering and because of our jubba and qaba and because of the masjid that we are running and we teach them to come together in the name of Islam and we bring them together and we provide an avenue for them to come together without hijab on a day when Allah is very happy with us on a day when the Prophet ﷺ has commanded that you be happy and make merry. If we assume this style of happiness, imagine how will we face the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. It will be the hands of the Prophet ﷺ and the callers of such people who are teaching the Ummah that coming together is okay. That you can, this is a day of happiness. And we are your religious leaders, so we are telling you that come together and interact freely with each other. Do the zina of your eyes. We are providing you the opportunity. Eat together and be happy together. And chant Eid Mubarak together. May Allah protect us. So my dear respected brothers, it is very important that on an individual level, we understand what is right and what is wrong. We understand and we ask ourselves that this thing that we are doing, that someone is telling us to do, does it conform with the society of the Prophet ﷺ, no matter how much they take the name of Medina, no matter how much they take the name of Sunnah, no matter how much they take the name of reviving Islam. 
we have to ask ourselves, have we ever seen in any books or any narration of the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat would come together and eat ice cream together? Or the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat would come together and eat and celebrate Eid together? What kind of Islam are we being fed? What kind of teachings are we being given? Right before our eyes, in the name of Islam. And the accusation is that the other side is, is doing bid'ah. In the name of Islam, in the name of Eid, you bring together two sexes and you give them an avenue to celebrate together and you say that the other person is doing bid'ah. The other person is bid'ati. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Everybody has to die and everybody has to go in their grave. We are depending on the intercession of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the name of whose sunnah we don't, we, don't, we don't tire ourselves with taking. Constantly taking the name of sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his beloved city and this is what we are doing. We have to face the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. What if he asks us that day, that was this my sunnah? Was this the Islam that I brought? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. My dear respected brothers, it is very important that we individually learn and read about the life of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is the true original Islam. That is the Islam that we have to go back to. That is the Islam that will grant us salvation on the day of judgment. Everything else is doom, utter doom, ultimate doom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Some people, they say that the first thing one should start from is learning the translation of the Qur'an if you don't speak Arabic or understanding the Qur'an. I say that learn the life of the Prophet ﷺ first, then dive into the Qur'an. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Qur'an to people. He showed them the life of the Prophet ﷺ first. The love of the Prophet ﷺ, his honesty, was beyond doubt then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them Quran then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them Quran through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam therefore learn the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and of course by all means then start learning the Quran from proper scholars inshallah you will get the true benefit of Quran like the Sahaba God, Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the best of effects in the hearts of the people who heard and the one who said, Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta al-Samir al-Aleem. Watu alayna inna kanta al-Tawwab al-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khilqi Sayyidina wa nana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.